All right, I'm standing in front of a 2015 2500 HD Silverado. Uh, yesterday was one of our first nice days of the year. Let's see outside, it's a little nice out. And unfortunately, I go turn my AC on and nothing. So we're here to see what is up with the AC unit. Okay, according to my thermostat, we are about 78 degrees. Looking at the gauges. We are 134A. Let's see right here. Our 134A. Sorry about the glare. I hope you're catching this. But we're gonna use our 134A, which is blue. We're gonna run all the way up until we hit right around 80 degrees. And that should put us I don't know about 86 psi at rest. We got a little gauge out here. With the low side the unit. Pull this off. Side. I'll take that. Put this on here. There we go. Do this until it starts to charge up. All right. So we got this on. It's hooked. We're linked, and we're showing. Looking at the phone here. Right around 86 psi. So we know we're not low on refrigerant. Okay. Um. So that means we have either some sort of control problem here. So we'll loosen this back up. Comes all the way up, stops. Get that off. Okay. And the nice part about using this, which I like, instead of setting up a whole set of gauges, not really losing any refrigerant at all. A little bit right here. A little, that's it. So we're good. Yeah, she's saying none. Air conditioning compressor, refrigerant, solenoid valve is at 0%. No command. We will turn on the AC. Okay, you can hear the motor rev up. Let me turn on. Command stat, none. Compressor, refrigerant, solenoid valve is opening up. Okay, let's go see if we, um, let's see if, uh, the compressor's actually on. We have a bell. Some funky black stuff going on in it. You can see the belt's actually moving, but the clutch is not on. Arrow command it on. Communicating. Because it's on at 100%, and right now we are not on or 100%. Okay, so either our clutch is bad or there's some power going through the clutch. All I want to do is give it a whap, see if it takes on. Nice, so we know the now the compressor is definitely not frozen. All right, what I want to do now is just to actually test the wire integrity. Uh, this is a four and a half amp light. The, most of your AC clutches will run right around four amps, give or take 200 milliamps, right around there. So if this thing can actually light up this light, then we definitely know that there, the entire integrity of the wire is good. All right, let's try it out. There you go. Like that. Try it again. Okay, that's more than enough. All right, it was spinning for a minute there. I popped the wire back on and took off. Oops, he's starting to get spin. Look at that, he's falling apart. Ooh, trying. 
All right, time for a new clutch. All right, we're gonna pull off the radiator support cover. Spot right here. Stick this in here. Pull it up a little bit. Slide your tool in. And that's it. Okay, we'll do the rest of them. As for the upper hose clip, I usually just pull that out like this. Get it out. If we can get that out of the way, probably take that one off too. And as for the shroud, we'll just take these little clips off, same as the top. Put them out of there. Put that one over here. And we got two more on the other side. See another one sitting up at the top here. All right, now to get the shroud out, it's gonna be a little difficult because you got the hose kind of in your way. I don't want to let release the coolant, so I'm gonna wiggle it out of here. Try not to hit the radiator. Okay, it takes a little bit of finesse, but hey, you'll get it. All right, now, so nothing happens here. Well, we need the lower shroud out too. Nothing but some, some clips. Just... Before we pull that off, I'm gonna get this fan out of here. All right, we're gonna be using this kit from Lyle. It's part number 43300. What this does is going to help us pull this fan off. What you want to do is you want to try to keep the tool about a 90 degrees. Seems to work the best. Well, that's what they tell you. All right, let's give it a little whap. That's it. Use this as a wrench to take it off. Radiator support out of here. Be super careful with this. Try not to hit the radiator at all. There we go. Helps to bend it a little bit. There we go. Now what I like to do, stick a piece of cardboard right in front of the radio. Okay. Pull these over, a little clamp on here. Get the new one here. All right, we need to get This belt off. Fortunately, there's no real way of taking it off without cutting it. And in order to get the new one on, you gotta take the serpentine belt off, the main belt. So what I'm gonna do is take this off first. Let's get it out of our way anyways. And we're gonna use this kit right here. Made by Gear Wrench. It's a 3680D, it's part number. fancy you could actually just use a wrench on it but I got the set so why not I believe it's a 15 uh, looks like a 15 right yep that's it there we go this up like this uh, two more notches pull that off pull the belt off and release there we go your belt.
All right, we'll cut that off. Of course, it's the famous 10 millimeter. <laughs> that one always seems to get lost. I should probably should. clutch in here you'll see a snap ring a set of snap ring clears a little difficult to get the hole. the hole okay push it in hard squeeze it pull it out watch you don't lose it there you go okay put that aside okay and this comes off okay so inside here You'll see another snap ring. Careful not to drop it. All right. See the wire right there. The connector, as you've seen, I had off before. You see a little gray tab. And all you do is pull the tab forward. You're actually going to push it away from it. You push it towards the firewall. You see it pop out. Okay, once that's out, then you're actually going to squeeze that spot. A little great thing and pull it up. It comes right off, see? There you go. Alright, we're going to take that. this off. We're not worried about ruining it, so we're just going to try and dry it off. There you go. Alright, this doesn't want to come off. You can raise this. Pry it up. A little bit of a screwdriver and it should, should pop up. Oh, there we go. Okay. We're off. Here's a little brush. Just to get a little out of there. Alright, and we'll use a little bit of brake clean. Straight up a little bit. Wipe it down. Oh, no crud on there. The whole surface, everything. And then there's a little groove in there where we took the C clip out. A little pick and just go around it. Clean it off again. And on the back of it, there's like a little pin here, okay? Now you know that that wire was here. If you look right here, this goes on, it should fit. It should lock on. The wire's up here, okay? All right, same thing with the new one. Here's your little pen, your dowel. That's gonna go on here. And push it a little tight. Locks right on. All right, put the C-clip on. Just a little helpful hint. Take the C-clip, put the C-clip on first, then measure the gap between the two. And that way when you put this on, you put the C-clip on, you check the gap, and you'll know if you had it in all the way. Inside of here, you'll see a little shim. Not more than like a washer. You gotta save that. It's gotta go into the new one. I'm gonna do something a little different here just to make sure. I got them sitting flush right now. This is the old shim that was in there. This is the new shim. Came with a new shim. I'm gonna drop these in there. All right, what I wanna do is I wanna check the surface distance to the center of the shim is. I'm going to take a dial indicator. Come in there. Come down here. Zero that out. Over here. I'm looking at about four thousandths. 
This one's sitting about four thousandths lower than this one. Um, that's not bad. Yeah, your human hair, believe it or not, is uh, about three thousandths. So it could be the variation between me not sitting quite right. I think we should be good. We'll test it once we get down there, though. All right, so make sure you let, you got your shim in there, son. Put a little blue Loctite on a bolt. A little bit. And this goes uh, 13 foot pounds, which is more like one Ugga Dugga. There you go. Ah. You can hear it barely rubbing. I don't know if you can hear that. That's perfect. Alright, I'm gonna take the foley, the belt. I'm gonna take the belt. Slap it on here right here. Little tool in here. Build around the boy like this. Bring this up all the way. Okay, it looks like that. Then we're gonna work it on the AC clutch. Spin it out. Make sure stays lined up. Oh, you fell. Sorry, dude. Sorry, buddy. Knocked you over. I hope no one got hurt. Keep going with this. Little tool falls out. Make sure you're on there right. You're not on there. Right. Okay, we're a little off. Let's pull it right here. Serpentine belt back on. Here. Make sure it's in all the grooves. Make sure if you don't get in, you can be off a little bit and just shoot a belt right up. It's done. Okay, that's how it's done. Let's take this off. Pull the shroud.
the fan on now. Go we'll get one little jolt. There you go. Okay, that's done. All right. Okay. Top part on. This is where you gotta be really careful. Yeah, this first thing on top. Just like it here. It right, looks good. Everything's back together. Double check the belt. Looks good. Oh, it looks good. The belt's spinning. Plus the stationary. Over here. Oh, come on, buddy. All right, we'll turn the AC on. There she goes. Engine's revving up. There it is. Nice. Yeah, I got a probe stuck in the vent. Watching it drop, we should get to yeah, forties. All right, while we're waiting for that to uh, cool off, um, I just want to thank everybody for watching, and don't forget to hit that like button. And if you want more of these, hit the subscribe button. Be much appreciated. Uh, and leave a comment down below if you think I did something wrong, or or leave a comment if you think I did something right. Uh, all right, appreciate it. All right, thank you. See here now, uh, okay. Now we're down at about 49 degrees. So she's cooling off, it's getting cold in here. I almost forgot to put this back on. That's what I wanted you guys noticed. <laughs>